Hello, Josie Wales here again, and welcome to this video. This is the second video which is designed to complement my post in the Few Good Men forums entitled The Relationship Between Soft Factors, Morale and Fatigue. We're going to address a very contentious point in this video, and that is the effect of the leadership modifier for a platoon HQ. There's a lot of confusion around what the leadership modifier of an HQ unit does for subordinate units. And what we're going to do here is unpack that, find out the myths from the reality and hopefully clarify things. So we're going to set up a couple of tests. For this first test we have a regular platoon. It consists of three rifle squads. First squad has been split up for the purposes of the test but the squads have no other modifiers for either leadership or motivation or fitness. However, the Platoon HQ has got a minus two leadership modifier. So we've split out eight members of first squad into a suicide sub team and we send them out to get shot to pieces. And after a few minutes of being machine gunned down, they have suffered six casualties just as a point of interest that has no impact on this test that the sub squad is now led by Private Romero because of the casualties and he has a minus two leadership modifier. Because the persistent morale effect caused by casualty buildup doesn't just affect the unit that's taken the casualties, we can see that the other squads have moved down into a cautious morale state. And the Platoon HQ is now in a nervous morale state. The reason it's slightly lower is because of its minus two leadership modifier. So what we can say so far is that casualty buildup not only has a persistent morale effect on the unit taking the casualties, but those units closely connected organizationally also suffer a persistent morale impact. We can also say that a low leadership modifier seems to indicate a bigger impact is suffered on persistent morale from casualty buildup for the unit which has the modifier. We reset everything again for the second test where we have again regular platoon with no modifiers for any of the squads and the platoon HQ this time has got a plus two leadership modifier. First squad has again been split up so that it has an eight man suicide team which is sent out to again get shot to pieces. So after six casualties are taken by the suicide sub team, we stop the simulation so that we're in line with the first test. Just out of interest, the sub team is now led by Private Harriam with a minus one leadership modifier. The rest of the platoon is in a cautious morale state, which is no different from the first test where the platoon HQ had a leadership modifier of minus two. Just to reconfirm, the Platoon HQ definitely does have the plus two leadership modifier. We can now make the additional conclusion that the leadership modifier of the Platoon HQ has no effect on its subordinate squad's persistent morale state. But I hear you ask, if the leadership modifier affects the persistent morale state of the unit which has the modifier, why is the Platoon HQ also in a cautious morale state, surely it should be higher. We run the simulation for a little bit longer until first squad's sub team takes another casualty and it's enough to put the rest of the platoon into the persistent morale state of nervous. And here we start to see the granular effect of the modifiers because the platoon HQ is still only in a cautious state and this is because of its plus two leadership modifier. We can now make our three final conclusions. Number one, that casualty buildup not only has a persistent morale effect on the unit taking the casualties, but those units closely connected organizationally also suffer a persistent morale impact. Number two, the leadership modifier gives resistance to the persistent impact on morale caused by casualty buildup for the unit with the modifier. Number three, the leadership modifier of an HQ unit has no effect on its subordinate unit's persistent morale state. 